every person's learning journey is different. I talked about mine a little bit in a video titled The Dumbest Mistakes I Made While Studying English. And there I mentioned that I've been studying English for 20 years, technically, <laughs> but only eight years on my own and with access to content in English. Today I'm gonna share my story of learning English from beginner to intermediate, and then how I went from an intermediate to advanced level of English. I'll share the exact steps that helped me become more or less fluent in the language. This time I'm gonna talk about passive skills like reading and listening. And in my next video, I'm gonna share everything I know about active skills, speaking and writing. Let's dive in. I grew up in a small town, more like a big village in Siberia, Russia. And back then we didn't have access to the internet and not a lot of people had computers. That's why there weren't any opportunities for me to find books or movies in English. I studied at ordinary Russian school and we translated English texts into Russian, we studied vocabulary and grammar, and we learned small texts by rote. After 10 years, I had a nice foundation of vocabulary and grammar, but zero active skills like speaking and writing. I couldn't speak, I couldn't write. My listening skills were also practically non-existent because my school didn't have any tapes with listening materials. However, I'm really grateful to my teachers for laying this foundation of my language skills and for igniting this interest in the language. I even tried <laughs> writing poetry once. Yeah, once. My English teacher returned this poem to me with like, red marks all over it highlighting my copious mistakes. I studied law at university and it did nothing for my English. Well, it kinda killed my joy for reading. So after graduating from university in 2010, I couldn't read for a few years. And only when I started reading in English did I found joy in reading again. As I was saying, I graduated from university in 2010, and I forgot about English for a few years. In 2013, a new chapter of my life began when I moved to Cyprus. I started learning English on my own, and uh, my level was around pre-intermediate back then. Okay, now let's talk about reading and listening. Reading. In 2012, after a long pause of not studying English at all, I picked up Harry Potter in the Philosopher's Stone and tried to read it. I didn't succeed because it turned out more challenging than I expected and I really tried to look up every single word in the dictionary and it took me ages to go through three or four chapters and it was all I could manage. After that, I picked up The Wizard of Oz, but with Russian translation provided. It was like one page in English and one in Russian. The process was painful. <laughs> I don't know, the reading process was so difficult, so challenging for me, until I said to myself, screw that, and I just ditched the Russian translation altogether. And it became much easier to finish the book in English. Also, I didn't look up words in the dictionary, but instead, for the first time ever, I tried guessing them from the context. And it worked. It became much easier to read and more pleasurable. It was more fun. And my school vocabulary fortunately was good enough to read children's books. And that's what I did for a while. For the next two years, I was reading one book a month, mostly children's books and young adult fantasy novels. With each completed book, I 
became more and more confident in my reading skills and I enjoyed the process of reading so much. That was the key. Enjoyment. Fun. I gotta admit, some of my non-fiction books and classics weren't super fun, but they served other purposes like learning something new. In 2015, I was reading two books a month, then three in 2016, and since 2017, I've been reading and listening to around one book a week. If you want to know more about how reading in English changed my life and my English, check out the video right here. Besides books, I also read articles online and from physical copies of magazines. I don't like straining my eyes, so I try not to read a lot from my screen, but Newsella and BBC.com were and still are my favorite resources. And when it comes to physical copies of magazines, I like Scientific American, National Geographic, BBC History, no, Archaeology, and BBC History, and a lot others. I don't read as many articles as I used to when I was studying for IELTS. Back then, I was reading at least one issue of Scientific American from cover to cover every single month. And it helped me a lot with expanding my vocabulary and expanding my knowledge about the world. Listening. My listening skills were basically non-existent when I started learning English again eight or nine years ago. However, my grammar and vocabulary were pretty good. So I decided to try listening to a podcast, and this podcast was called ASL POD. It's a podcast with American English, a delightful host, and, which is the most important part, slow English. Right now, you need to pay for this podcast, but back then it was accessible for free, but you could buy transcripts and some learning materials which I did. And I listened to this podcast while reading the transcripts. And it helped my English and my listening skills a lot. Also, I listened to the same episodes of the podcast again and again. And with each listening session, I understood the podcast much, much better. I listened to the ESL POD every single day for a few years, and I really enjoyed doing that. The host was a delight to listen to. He was cracking jokes all the time and explained vocabulary in a very accessible way. I outgrew this podcast in around 2015 and switched to a variety of podcasts on different topics in a variety of accents aimed at native speakers. In my 20s, I watched all 10 seasons of Friends in Russian for the first time. I fell in love with the show and I found it delightful. I fell in love with the characters and I watched it like 100 times. I'm not kidding, maybe even more. <laughs> And after a while, I decided to watch this TV show in English because I, I knew it so well. And that's what I did. And it changed my listening skills forever. And it changed the whole game of me studying English forever. Because um, the thing is, when you listen to things that you really enjoy in its native language, there is something magical in it. My listening skills became much better. And I rewatched all 10 seasons many, many, many times in English. I kept my friends in the background for a few years when I did like everything. And I was amazed at how many awesome jokes I missed because of Russian translation. 
I watched a ton of TV shows and movies after Friends, with and without subtitles. I also watched a lot of YouTube content. Oh, YouTube is a rabbit hole. <laughs> and even though I improved my listening skills a lot using YouTube, uh, it was a huge time sucker for me, and still is. For the longest time, the only accent in English I was comfortable with was general American accent. And then I came to realize that the world is much bigger than one part of America. Nowadays, I try to listen to a variety of accents through YouTube, TV shows, and podcasts. This series of videos by Jennifer ESL helped me a lot with understanding fast speech in English. And also, the more you get exposure to various content in English, the better you become at understanding it. Practice is everything. What I really like about passive skills like reading and listening is that the only thing you need to really improve them is to, well, consume content in English that you really enjoy. With active skills, the situation is a bit more complicated. I'm gonna talk about speaking and writing in my next video. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you liked it, consider subscribing for more awesome language content!